Hello, I'm Brian Warren. We're here today at the Gene Haas Center in Meridian, Mississippi at Meridian Community College. Today I have two program students with us, Jay and Michael. Jay's going to show Michael how to use our wireless probe system. If you have any videos you would like to see in the future, be sure to leave a comment and we're happy to, to partner up with Practical Machinists for this. All right, so first we're going to call up our automatic probing system, which we have on tool 30. And the first probing operation we're going to do is going to be an outside corner operation. We're going to use the bottom left corner as our zero zero for this one. So. We're going to open our door. And it's always a good idea when you're going down on your Z to move slowly until you get comfortable with things because you don't want to pop an automatic probe. That could be a pricey mistake. And I always like to bring mine down close to about a quarter of an inch above the workpiece. And you just kind of eyeball it, it doesn't have to be precise. All right, and then once you're there, you'll go back to your work offsets. We're gonna go into our offsets. I'm gonna let you do this. And we're gonna go under G54, that's where our work offsets are stored, and hit F3 for probing actions. And then you're going to scroll down until you find outside corner all the way to your left and hit enter. Bottom right. <laughs> all right. And so once you're at this screen, you're first going to need to select which corner that you're going to use as your zero point in your probing cycle. So you, as you can see, you can do any corner. Like I said, we're going to do our bottom left. So under D, you would want to put one which is already there. And then your next value is X. And basically you're gonna tell the probe how far to come over on that axis before it touches and gets your uh, measurement. So you can really do this a bunch of different ways. Personally, I just do 300 every time. So hit 0.3, enter. All right, and then go down to your Y. And we'll do the same thing there. And it's the same principle applies except for you're doing it on your Y axis. And then go down to your Z. And this is gonna tell the probe how far down it needs to go uh, before it moves over and actually tries to touch a workpiece. And so right now we're positioned about a quarter of an inch above the workpiece. And so you gotta account for the diameter of the stylus too. So a safe one I always go to is when I go down to a quarter of an inch above the part, I usually do negative 300. And then at that point, you're ready to run the operation. Cycle start. Another thing worth mentioning is you always want to make sure that the largest diameter of the globe at the end of the stylus is what is touching the workpiece to get the most accurate uh, zero point for your program. All right, and that's all there is to probing your outside corner on your workpiece. Of course, if we were gonna actually run a program with this, we'd also want to do a single surface uh, probing action to get our Z0 on top of the workpiece, which we're gonna show you how to do next. All right, so now we're gonna talk about single surface probing. And that, as you, the name would imply, is when you are probing one single surface. So we're going to, in this example, probe the Z. We're gonna do our Z0 on our workpiece. So we're going to open up our machine and handle jog down to just above the surface that we want to probe. 
Like I said earlier, with the outside corner probing, I like to do about a quarter of an inch above the part. So I'm gonna come down. And then I like to do it in the center of the part too, or as the center as you can get it just by eyeballing it. All right, so once you're there, you will go into your offsets, hit offset and go over to work, cursor over, and then cursor down to G54, where we store our work offsets, and then hit F3. All right, and we're gonna do single surface, enter. All right, and since we're doing the Z, you'll cursor down to Z, and we'll do negative 0.25, because we're roughly a quarter inch above the part. Do you hit negative? Enter. There you go. All right. And then after that, we'll just hit cycle start. All right. So now we know, or now your machine knows where your Z0 is for your program. So something else that's worth talking about with the single surface probing is that you can use it, uh, especially when you have some like strange things that you're making. So actually I made this part earlier today and when it was in the jig, I had to do single surface to get my measurements because there were things that were in the way or that I just couldn't get to with all the other devices. So if you can do single surface probing from any of your, uh, X, Y, or your Z. And so that just comes in really handy once you start machining um, parts that are you know, weird shaped and kind of hard to get to with any of the other operations. All right, so this time we're gonna be doing a rectangular block probing cycle. And basically what that does is it brings the, the, uh, the probe to all four outside edges and gives you a, a zero point that's dead center of your part, mostly dead center of your part. When you're probing on a rectangular block, you want to get your probe as close to center as you can on your workpiece. So we're gonna handle jog down on our Z axis until we're about a quarter of an inch above it, moving really carefully so that we don't cost people lots of money. Jody. All right. And of course you can always use a ruler to get a better idea of where you're at. I like to do this because I'm a stickler. That's exactly where it needs to be. Yeah, and that's close enough. All right. So we're going to go into our work offsets and I'm going to let you do this and go to G54 as usual, usually and then hit F3 Every time. and go up until you see rectangular block and hit enter. All right, and so when you have this screen pulled up on your rectangular block, you have to tell it the dimensions of your piece or roughly the dimensions of your piece. And so for our stock, we're working with a block that is two and a half inches on the X axis And then on the Y axis, we're two inches. There you go. All right, and, and then um, for our Z, all right, so for our Z, since we're having to start above the part and then come over and come down, we're gonna tell it kind of like we did with the corner probing cycle, uh, where we're gonna have to tell it to go down a little bit further since we're already above it so by so much. So. Since we're roughly probably about 300, 350 above the part, let's tell it to, let's leave it at half inch and that should get what we need it to get and cycle start.
And that's how you probe a rectangular block. So now we're going to do a boring upper, or a boring cycle for our probing. And basically, that's when you have a bore in your part and you want to probe from that bore. Um, so as usual, we're going to jog down our uh, probe. You're going to get pretty center. And you want to make sure that you are lower than the outside of that bore. That ought to cut it and get it centered up pretty good. That ought to do. All right, so we're going to go to our work offsets. G54, yep, F3. And then go up, oh, you're right there already, enter. All right, and so with this one, all you're really gonna do is you're gonna tell it the diameter of that hole. All right, so we're gonna say it is about 2.8 in diameter. So you'll put that under D, always give it the D. And we didn't really talk about this with the rectangular block, but there are these other the variables here, right here we have X and Y, and then under the rectangular block, I think it's I and J. Um, we're not gonna mess with those in this video. So now that you have that in place, you hit cycle start. And that is how you probe using a bore. Now we're gonna probe using a boss. So we're gonna go into our work offsets and I've already got it positioned. G54, F3, right. And boss, that's right, enter. All right, so when you're doing your boss, when you're probing from a boss, you want to line it up just like you would on a uh, on your bore, dead center, except for this time you want to be about a quarter inch or however far you feel comfortable with above the part. Just keep in mind that when you come down on your Z, you are of course going to have to get down on this edge, which we don't have a lot to work with right there, so it's a little close, but clearance is clearance. All right, so you, now you want to give it the D, and in this case our D is a whopping 2.5. And then you want to tell it how far down to go on the Z. I have lined this out so that hopefully a half inch will get it. So we'll leave that there. And then of course we're going to leave our X and our Y alone on this one. And now you just hit cycle start. Here we go. And now we have established our X and Y zero using a boss. All right, so for the last one we're gonna do today, we are gonna do a rectangular pocket. So of course, you're gonna wanna line up on your rectangular pocket and get down inside of that pocket. In this scenario, our pocket is extremely shallow. So we're gonna be really careful about that. That ought to do it, that's safe. And then we'll get as close to center as possible. All right, so we're gonna go to our work offsets. And then we're gonna select rectangle pocket. And then go down to your X. And so for your X, you're gonna tell it how wide your pocket is. 
In this case, we're looking at about 3.75. And then for our Y, we're, I'm sorry, let's make that 3.3. .3. Okay. And then we will cycle start. We're leaving the H and the I alone. And now we have established our X and Y zero using a rectangle pocket.